For this week's project, we're going to be making a cityscape inspired by the American pop art painter James Rizzi. The first step is going to be to draw rectangles and other geometric shapes to make buildings. And after drawing rectangular buildings, I start to add other shapes to make it a little bit more decorative, to make more unique shapes for the buildings. And after that, we're adding sort of cartoonish faces to make, um, to give the buildings a little bit of personality. So what we want to do is think about a variety of different expressions we can show in our work. Um, I'm trying to create a variety of different types of eyes and different types of mouths to show different sorts of moods and feelings. But you'll notice I'm taking a very cartoonish approach using simplified shapes to represent those different features. I'm not trying to make realistic eyes and mouths. I'm just using rectangles and semicircles to make the eyes and trying to create different expressions. After I have drawn the expressions on the buildings, I'm going to add some little details like windows and doors to make it a little bit more like a regular building because I want the audience to have that connection that it is anthropomorphized buildings and not just sort of geometric monsters. And then I am going to color. And to color, I want to see some texture in your work. So one technique you could use is putting your paper on top of something, like I used that Lego base plate, or I just ripped pieces of paper and put it on top and then did a crayon rubbing so the texture of those loose bits of paper would show through in my coloring. Another technique you could use is simply coloring to create the appearance of texture. So you can just make patterns of lines and dots and things like that that would have a similar look to a texture, what we call an implied or synthetic texture. So in this case, I'm using lots and lots of little lines, um, the way that I would draw hair or fur on something. So you can actually do a texture rubbing, or if you don't have the materials to do that, you can simply draw patterns and create your own implied textures that way. Either way is fine. And while I am using crayons in this example, of course during remote learning you have your choice of, of media, so you may choose to use markers, crayons, colored pencils, you can use watercolor paints, whatever you have available to you is fine. But whatever you're choosing to use, make sure you take your time and do your best quality work with it. Now, after I've colored all the buildings, I want to make sure that I color the sky. A lot of people focus on just the buildings, just the shapes that they are drawing, which is what we call the positive space in our picture. But the negative space matters too. Every inch of your paper is a part of your picture. Every inch of that picture matters. So make sure you take your time coloring not only the positive space, but also the negative space. The, not just the buildings, but the space around the buildings. In this case, I'm using watercolor paints, and I wanted to make a dark night sky because it would create good contrast with the bright colors of the buildings. Of course, yours doesn't have to be a nighttime picture. You can color it however you would like. 